Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Now if you've been on this channel before you've seen that I'm lucky enough to be working at the Avenue Tennis Club which has beautiful lawns as you can see here behind me as well as 10 grass courts we've actually got four artificial clay and three synthetic grass courts so very lucky to be working at a club with such a vast array of different surfaces. In today's video I'm going to be showing you what goes on behind the scenes in keeping these courts in such good condition and I'm going to be interviewing our two groundsmen Graham and Ben who work here full-time maintaining these courts and the rest of the facilities at the club. Right, so we're here with Graham and Ben, who are the groundsmen here at the Avenue Tennis Club. They are the brains and the beauty of what goes on behind the scenes here. Oh, yeah. um, I have to put it in for you, mate. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, so we've got a few questions. You guys have asked me some questions over on Instagram, so I'm gonna go through a quick list. But to start off with, we're gonna ask the guys, um, so how long have you been here at the club? So me, I've been here for 20 years. Um, started off with uh, the previous manager of the courts, which was Mike Brooks. Um, so I learned a lot of knowledge from him. Um, and then when he retired, I employed young Benjamin here, and he's been with me for five years. Yep, five years. Yeah. And obviously these, we've got 10 grass courts here. We've also got artificial clay, synthetic grass, which these guys look after all of these courts um, throughout the whole year. So, so next question, how did you learn about grass tennis courts in particular? So I know you've got gardening backgrounds and things, but how did you really specialise in tennis courts? So again, um, I learned quite a lot from previous um, court manager, and it, it was pretty much, as you say there, gardening background, and then wanted a new challenge of um, developing the skills. The job opportunity came up, took it with him, and learned quite a lot of stuff on the job, you know, getting your hands dirty, getting a feel for things, improving each time, and then going on courses up at Wimbledon, been to three now. They're very good, very well run, very knowledgeable people up there. Mm. They're very open to questions, they don't make it feel like they know everything and you know nothing. They're very open of how you can improve your skills or little changes to make you more efficient on the court. Amazing, and Ben, and you've again, been on a couple yeah. of you oh, up at Wimbledon. Yeah, I've been on two courses at Wimbledon. Um, I've had a gardening background, 16 years, been gardening, but then learned pretty much most of my knowledge from Graham. He's passed down all his knowledge. Um, so yeah, a combination of both really. Yeah. And I guess a bit like tennis coaching, you kind of learn through experience as well. You know, there's lots of challenges along the way. And um, you know, I'm sure when you when you go back up to Wimbledon, there's always new things to learn, to develop your own skills. But obviously they come up with new technology, and yeah. new systems. Like the last time we were there, <laughs> they were doing steam, steaming of the court, yeah. which we've never heard of before. So that was very eye-opening. But a lot of their knowledge we can apply to here as well, yeah. you know, which has been really fascinating for me. Yeah, uh, I mean, one of the interesting things that you mentioned to me, Graham, the other day when we were talking about Wimbledon that happened last week, where there was lots of players slipping over on, on centre court, you were talking quite a lot about the moisture in, in the uh, under the roof and the humidity levels, um, and you mentioned actually they've got a system which kind of aerates or dehumidifies the courts. Yeah, that's, yeah. when you go out there, some people just think, Oh, it's a bit of grass. There's so much science and technology that goes behind. Definitely being in a stadium, you're playing an outdoor game in indoor conditions. So yeah, they have to come up with ways of really getting the best out of the grass to try and make it feel like it's still uh, an open venue. But um, no, you know, great that you can go up to Wimbledon and talk to those guys because you know, looking at these courts, they are known as some of the best in the country. You know, thanks to you um, and obviously what you've learned through you know, the people at Wimbledon and, and all throughout your careers. But um, yeah, so talking about your week, obviously you're here quite a lot of the time. You're here early in the morning before any of the members get here. It's actually been quite tough for us to book this slot in because you've been so busy through the, the last few weeks. So talk to me through kind of your weekly schedule um, as such. I know it changes between winter and summer, but what do your weeks look like nowadays in the summer season? Summer season, so it's pretty regimented. So Monday, Wednesday and Friday, we cut the courts and mark them out. So I'll get in first, start cutting sideways and then Ben comes in behind and starts marking out. And then once we've got five done, we'll swap over and then Ben will start cutting the opposite way. And then I'll finish off marking, put the nets up. And then when we come together, we finish off those courts. And do you change the length of grass throughout the season at all? Or is it kind of standard length? For, for playing uh, time, it's always the same. It's eight mil. 8 millimetres in yeah. length of grass, yeah. um, so in the lead up do you have to gradually 
make that shorter and shorter. Yeah, well we have to do it incrementally because obviously if you take it down really short straight away it's just going to scorch. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's quite a long process really to get yeah. it down to the, the height that's needed. But when it's at that height it stays. Yeah, I mean it just looks like a, a carpet, you know, when it yeah. is the playing season you get it down to 8mm it just looks perfect all the way through. And are there any challenges that stop you from make, getting that short grass? You know, it, does, does the weather affect it? Yeah, too? weather is, is our main challenge yeah. really, isn't it? Definitely um, early in the season. So like this year, where it was dry and cold um, and not much moving, we were getting frost you know, at the time where the grass should be growing. So we still have to keep it you know, long or longer than what it should be at that time because we never knew what was going to happen so then when it comes to the playing season you can't just if you've got your grass that long take it down to there as Ben mentioned before it would just really suffer so this year has been very challenging due to the weather sometimes we come in in the morning say on the Monday and we could have some puddles on there so that would be very good for mowing um, so then we have to delay cutting that day to the next day so then that does throw our schedule out so then we have to you know, um, shift around yeah yeah and with with regards to you know a lot of rainfall does it impact the surface beneath the actual grass does it make it softer yeah definitely normally this time of the year if we've had a good summer the courts are rock hard and um, at the moment still they're nowhere near the density where they should be so yeah I guess when it's when it's a little bit softer it's tougher to manage and obviously in normal climates you know in, in the summer where it gets warmer and you get the course get played on a bit more it, the, the core surface is more firm yeah um, you know and then you get those perfectly true bounces every time but it has been correct. heavy heavy rain and you know um, like it has been for the last few months actually the surface being a bit softer things like falling over and knocking your knee into the court will make the dent in I was going to say, sort of wear and tear could be a challenge, can't it? Yeah. Like repairing, you know. So we obviously have to cl we close the courts when they're wet, yeah. um, you know, for two reasons. One, it's very slippy for, for players, so dangerous for them. But also, you know, more importantly for you guys, it damages the courts, doesn't it? You know, if people are playing yeah. on wet conditions, as they make a slide or they, you know, if they fall over and dent the court with their knee, it's going to start, you know, really wearing the court down. So yeah. I guess that's quite important within looking after grass courts, yeah. making sure they're being used at the right times. Right times, definitely. Um, again, like this year, normally along our baselines, are normally pretty warm by now. This year, still looks like it's in the first couple of months of the season. Again, that's due to maybe not as much play, but with the rain, the grass repairs pretty quick and gets growing. It's been ideal growing conditions for all of it, really. And the other challenge you mentioned to me before is worms um, and, and yeah. things like that. So, um, you know, is there anything that you can do to prevent the worms? So I guess, you know, some types of worms you mentioned are good for the courts. Yeah, definitely. And others, you know, not so good. Yeah, again, the challenge with the worms is the casting. So after heavy rain, normally again in the summertime, you wouldn't have any at all because the uh, soil's too hard for it to, the worms to come up. Obviously, where it's been raining quite a lot now, the soil's nice and soft, so they're still coming up, making worm cuts. And obviously, when there's worm cuts, when we go over with the mower, it um, smears the soil over the top. It doesn't really do too much, but it doesn't look as nice. Normally, you're mowing the grass every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, three times a week. Yeah. Um, is that the same with painting the lines on the courts? Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, we do. Yeah, that's sort of that's one the job really. Yeah, every time we cut the courts, we mark out so they're nice, fresh, bright lines for yeah. people to see. And how do you? One of the questions that keeps coming up on on the Instagram uh, when I post about you guys is how do you get the line so straight? You know, I've, I've seen you guys doing it, but do you want to let the people that are watching know how do you get not so that straight? straight. Don't look. <laughs> <laughs> no. To me, they look. You know, I'm looking yeah. down this line now, and it looks perfectly straight. So, uh, yeah, how do you? I do think it? the main thing really, like the simple answer, is practice. Definitely. You know, I mean, we do have like a guide string. I don't know if you've seen us with the string. Yeah, I'll put a little video of that because you know, yeah. you guys whack a yeah, stake down with the string, don't you? Yeah. We have court markers at the end. Yeah. So for every line, we've got a little marker in the ground. So then when we put the string down, it's always on the right position each time. So that corresponds to each end. So you get that nice and straight. And then 
has been the sand. Not nice and slow practice. Yeah. Um, it's almost like a mindset you get into. Um, yeah, you just got to get in the zone, in the basically. Zone. You put some music in while yeah, you're doing it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. A bit of Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton for you. What are you listening to? <laughs> I'm not as uh, as cultured as Ben, so <laughs> I normally listen to the radio. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's a um, mixture of the uh, paint and the water, so you make up a solution uh, to get. If you want it really bright, if it's been really wet and the grass is, you know, still quite soft. You can make it as bright or as you know, light as you like, really. Yeah. Yeah, nice. And you mentioned those markers at the on the corners of the courts. I guess that helps you with measuring out the courts. You know, right at the start of the season when it's just a plain, you know, sheet of grass with no lines on. I guess those corner markers mark out the, the lengths. Yeah. Um, so you haven't got one court longer than the other. No. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. No. Um, awesome. So the last couple of questions then, we're talking about the, the type of grass that's used. So is this grass the same as what you would use in your back garden or is, is there some differences? Um, unless you're a professional and you like a nice lawn in your back garden, I'd say no. Um, so we use rye grass and within that rye grass there'd be four different um, varieties of that. We use two different types. We use R9 for on the court, um, and then another one called R25, which is for the baselines. That's more hard wearing. For where your know, players are running around the baseline and yeah. wearing them down a bit more. One more question. Do you have any tips for people if they either are working at a tennis club and they're looking after their courts, or if they want their garden looking like this? Have you got a top tip from you, Graham? It's a lot of hard work. Um, uh, regular mowing, sharp blades, and then if you do see any kind of disease creeping in, give it a good treat straight away so it doesn't develop into anything too major. Amazing. And then they can whack out the lines and, and play tennis in the garden. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds good. That sounds good. And Ben, have you got any top tips for uh, any budding gardeners out there? I think really it's like pretty much what Graham said because we're here, like we're concentrating on just these two areas of grass like three times a week. So, you know, not many people have that much time to dedicate to their garden, but I think, yeah, just sort of keeping on top of it, pretty much everything Graham said, if you see disease coming in, knowing what chemicals to treat um, the disease with, it's a biggie. Um, so I guess really it's just a case of finding a schedule that suits you, right? So you guys got a busy schedule, you're here yeah. most days. Yeah. If, they're, you know, if they can do it once a week or once, what, twice a week. Twice yeah, a week at diet. home, you'll be absolutely flying. Yeah, yeah. cut your grass that, that amount of time. The, the courts look amazing. They do every single year. Massive thanks to, to you guys and, and what you do on a on day-to-day -day basis. And it is, people don't see it because you're here before the club really opens. So, um, you know, big thanks from all, well, the coaching team, myself and all the, all the members. Well, thanks guys for your time. Um, if you guys haven't seen, Graham, come over here. We just want to need to show Graham's tash because um, <laughs> I think you guys will, uh, let's have a quick look. Let's zoom in. <laughs> Look at that beauty. That's a thing of beauty. So uh, there you go, Graham. That's it. That's his tash. And um, <laughs> if you want to, Ben, come over here. If yeah. you want to check out Ben, um, he me. has. Um, he's a music producer. So I'll put his. <laughs> I'll put a link down in the description below, yeah. and you can check out him on SoundCloud. Future SoundCloud. Yeah, but um, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, see you in the next video. <laughs>